Hello, my name is Julie, and this is KS Mom Crochets, and today is crochet podcast number 46. So, I have got a couple things finished in the past few days. I know it wasn't that long ago that I made a video, but I thought, why not? I'll just get on here and share um, what I've got done and what I'm working on, and um, I'm really excited to show one of my projects with you all. So here I am. <laughs> um, I do, before I get started, I do have a couple people that I want to kind of give a shout out to. Um, one person somebody emailed me about and then the other person is a relatively new channel that I thought maybe you might want to go over and check her out and, you know, give her a little bit of yarny love. Um, the first person is Doodly's Crochet, aka Julia. Um, she makes blankets, she makes amigurumi, um, she does an excellent job, and I have enjoyed um, watching her channel and watching her grow as a YouTube creator, and I hope that she continues to make videos. So definitely go and check her out. Maybe she will have some content that you enjoy. Um, the next person is Stanley's Crochet Workshop, and I am sure a lot of you have heard of Stanley before. Um, he is a young um, man that is crocheting and he donates all of his proceeds from sales of his amigurumi and um, things that he makes to charity and it is so awesome to see a young person like him um, crocheting and you know giving to charity like that um, i'm just so inspired by him um, so definitely go and check them out i will have both of their channels linked below now what have i been working on what have I got finished so m the first thing that I got finished is I made some coasters um not very <laughs> not very um not a very big project I should say but I did make some coasters because whenever I put up my Christmas stuff um well whenever I put out my Christmas stuff I always put up my other stuff that I have out like that stays out all the time and I lost every coaster that I had. <laughs> um, so I had to make me some more. And I found this cute little pattern. It is called the Floral Coaster. And it is free on Ravelry. And it is by Sarah. And I cannot say her last name. But I will have the pattern linked below. Um, and this is what it looks like. Now I used a 4.5 millimeter hook. And I'm pretty sure that she should she suggests using like a 3.5 I think. Um, with worsted weight yarn and I did not want to go that small with a uh, four weight yarn So that is what I did and I used I actually made two of them with using the same yarn um, I used sugar and cream black currant, which I think is this one and then the other one is grape Which is this one and then this variegated that you see is actually a big twist cotton from Joann's and it is called violet splash and I just think that these are so cute. Um, I did leave off the last row because she suggests blocking your coaster. And I was not going to block a coaster. Um, <laughs> I rarely ever block anything. Um, the only thing that I ever do block are my doilies that I make out of thread. So um, I just left that last row off because it started to kind of curl a little bit. Um, but they look really cute even without that last row. So just a quick little project and I needed them and I have been using them. Actually, my um, husband and my daughters, they both said that this was their favorite, um, this one right here, but I kind of prefer the this one, so. <laughs> um, and then the next finished object that I have for you, I'm very excited to share. I'm very excited to show you all. I am so happy with how this project turned out. Um, and that is my January gnome. Um, this is a gnome along by the passionate crafter.com. Um, it's a free pattern and, um, every month she is going to release a new gnome and, um, I had a couple people email me about it and I decided that I was going to try the first one and I love it. Now, in the pattern, she uses worsted weight yarn and I used Chepier's Katona, which is a two weight yarn and a 2.75 millimeter hook. And here is my gnome. 
Um, also in the pattern, she makes a crocheted beard and I did the needle felting beard. Um, let's see, I used, like I said, Chepier's Katona. I used the color um, Bluebell, which was this part and for the hat right here. And that is number 173. I used number 510, which is this color. And that was called Sky Blue. The nose and the hands are Shell, which is number 255. And then for the snowflakes, I used Snow White, which is number 106. And like I said, I gave him a needle felting beard instead of crocheting a beard. I prefer the look of a needle felted beard. And it's... When I first started looking into making gnomes, I thought that looks so hard to do, but actually it is easier to needle felt a beard <laughs> than it is to crochet one in my opinion. Um, let's see, what did I do different? So I did leave off the thumb on the hand. She does have to where you do some double crochets together or something to make a thumb, but I left that off. I was telling my daughter, I said, I've never met a gnome before, but I'm pretty sure gnomes don't have thumbs. <laughs> and she said that they had um, opposable thumbs, you know, like a cat, <laughs> and it only comes out when they're mad. But um, I just prefer the hands not to have a thumb. That's just personal preference. And then um, she only uses two snowflakes, and I decided to make three. And I also put stuffing in the hat, um, and in hers, she doesn't put stuffing. She also sews the hat on a little bit different to where it's like curled up in the front, and I just kind of um, positioned it around the um, nose there like I normally do with my other gnomes, and I prefer the look of that as well. Um, for this snowflake, I actually chained up five when I got done making the snowflake, and then I took my hook out, left my loop long, pulled my loop through the top of the hat, and then slip stitch all the way back down. And that was just to keep from having to sew that on. And I think it turned out pretty good. Um, and I really do like that little snowflake. I know it's really blowing out because it's white. But I really do like that little snowflake that she did. Um, it's actually... When you go to make this pattern um, on her blog, she has like a separate little link that you click to get to the snowflake pattern because it is a separate pattern. But I really do, um, I really do like the way that she did that. And it's only two rounds. And I could see myself making more of those later on in the future as Christmas ornaments or something. But yeah, here's my little gnome and I just love him. I'm so happy with how that he turned out. Um, and you never know, I may end up making more as she, um, releases, releases her other patterns, um, because I really did enjoy making this one. And I do like how that the, um, cause I normally make a lot of Pampino or No Boom from Etsy. I usually make a lot of her gnomes and her body is actually a little bit smaller. Like I do have one right here. Let me fix his beard. But the, um, let me turn it around backwards. Um, it's a little bit shorter and this gnome right here, its body is a little bit plumper. And I actually did like that, um, how that it turned out. The only thing that I think that I would do to a future gnome is maybe add another row of increase to the nose. I felt like the nose was a little bit small uh, because I do like the way that her nose is kind of big. <laughs> I do like the big nose that um, is on those other gnomes. But I hope you enjoyed seeing him. I really did have a lot of fun making him, and I really am happy with how that he turned out. So that is my last finished object. Now, I did start a new project. I did mention this in my last podcast that I wanted to start a corner-to-corner -corner blanket, and I started it. Um... I used um, Terry over at Yarn Jewelry Podcast. I used her tutorial on how to make a corner-to-corner -corner rectangle. And that video actually answered some of the questions that I had. She did a really excellent job um, explaining. Um, I really 
do recommend her tutorial um, if you don't know how to do corner to corner. But I'm just kind of winging it as far as how to do the colors because I've never done a blanket, like a full size blanket in corner to corner. So I don't really know like how many rows that um, I need to make it the length that I want. And so I can't, it's hard for me to like figure out how to do color changing. I probably should have done my first one in like a solid color, but I decided to do it in um, different colors. So this is what I have so far and it's getting pretty good sized, obviously. Um, how will it go? It goes like this. So right now, I think I am on row 43 and I haven't started, um, right now it's still in like square form. I haven't started making it into a rectangle yet. I wanted to make sure that I had the length or the width, I mean. And I think, I think that right now is probably a pretty good length. Um, what I decided to do is, um, well, actually, I kind of, when I first started out, I kind of got going with this um, darker green. And my rows progressed really fast because it was really small. And I really wasn't paying attention. I was watching TV. And before I knew it, I had like 18 rows done. And I was like, okay, I need to stop because I want to change colors. Um, because I do have two um, balls of or skeins of this dark green. I guess I should tell you what I'm using, huh? So I'm using a 6 millimeter hook on this. And I'm using Mary Maxim, Maximum Value Yarn. This color is dark green. This one is medium green. And then this one is green variegated. Um, they sell these as like, they sell them together. Um, and they had them on sale a while back, like last year or year before last. And they were really cheap. Of course, they're not so cheap now, <laughs> but they were at the time. And so I had bought, um, Two different sets the pink and the green ones and um i decided that i wanted to use these as a blanket um but as i was saying i did 18 rows of the start green and then i switched to the medium green there and did six rows of it six rows of the variegated and then i'm working on 18 rows of the start green and i'm almost getting through my <laughs> first skein of that dark green but like I said I do have another one so that I can add it in so I really like how it looks I think it's going to be really pretty um with those smaller stripes of the different colors of green um I kind of wish that I had put this dark green in between these but from my first corner to corner blanket I do think that it will look pretty. I think that I'll like it when it's done. Um, I think that I'm going to start decreasing. Um, I think that this will probably be the width that I'm going to go for. And then I don't know as far as length. I think that I will just repeat that color sync sequence and then I will probably add more of the dark green at the end um, and hopefully that will work out. Um, how do you all work out how to do your colors? Like if you use multiple colors in a corner to corner blanket, how do you come up with the number of rows that you need to do for your blanket? That is something that I'm very curious about because um, I had a really hard time planning this out because usually when I make a blanket, I kind of plan out in my head or even write it down on paper how that I kind of want the colors to be how many rows each color should be or you know just the color sequence and I don't really know how to do do it with um, this type of blanket I'm sure after I finish this one that I will be able to figure that out for a future one but I really do like how it's coming along I really do enjoy doing the stitch it's fun um, it's fun to work on and um, I'm really liking it 
I think that it's going to take me longer to make that type of blanket than it does to take go back and forth and I don't know why I feel like I'm a lot slower at that one but maybe I will get faster as I keep going on it so I wanted to add this little clip in because I had quite a few um, people ask me where that I got my willow square pattern from and this was from my frog it or finish it and I had found a bunch of willow squares that I had made probably about five years ago and I had no idea um, where that I had got this willow square pattern from but I looked through and tried to figure it out and I think that I did figure it out um, I think that my willow square pattern came out of this book which is 200 crochet blocks by Jan Eaton and this is the willow square so as you can see I do believe that it is the same square there is also a great YouTube tutorial here on YouTube that I will have linked below if you are not a um, you know you prefer to watch a YouTube video or you would prefer to have a free pattern and that is by crochet rocks um, so I will have that linked below and um, also I don't know I know I got this book off of eBay I'm not sure if they sell it on Amazon if I find the link to it I will but if I ever show books on my channel make sure that you always shop around because sometimes you can find um, used books very very cheap very reasonable um on ebay so that's just a little side note <laughs> but like i said i did want to um share where that i thought that i got my pattern from um because i had had a couple people ask me about it and um i wanted to uh, let you all know so back to the video um, but yeah, that's all that I have for you all. I haven't um, started anything new. I did pull out a bunch of my crochet books. I really want to work out of one of my books, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I want to do. <laughs> do you all ever do that? You know, just kind of be like, I really want to start something, but I don't know what to start. I know that I have a ton of old whips, um, a ton of whips in general that I need to work on but I really I just want to make something new and I want to make a new amigurumi so maybe next time you see me I will have something um new to show you <laughs> um I would appreciate if uh you all have anything that you're working on if you want to tell me what you're working on pattern suggestions anything like that kind of give me some inspiration I'm kind of stuck on what to make next <laughs> so um, yeah, that's all that I have for you all. I hope that you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope that you have a great week ahead. And thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me. Um, I really do appreciate it. And I really do enjoy your comments. So thank you for that. And thank you to um, all my new subscribers too. And all of my uh, ones that have been here with me for a long time. I really do enjoy... Um, seeing that little notification and being like oh yay they commented again or you know it's it's fun to um, get to know you all through the comments I have a lot of um, I have a lot of fun reading them and like I said getting to know you all so thank you for that and that's all that I got so until next time I will see you in another video bye